I'm Davey. I'm awesome. And welcome to Davey's Awesome Wrestling, where I review wrestling-related things, all from the perspective of a fan, not an insider. So this week, we had two big events. We had NXT Deadline, which I will review next week, because I can only review one a week, and Ring of Honor Final Battle. Let's get into Final Battle. The opening contest, which I don't remember ever being announced, but okay. Jurelistico and Roosh versus Blake Christian and A.R. Fox. It was a good match, but for a tag team match, it was pretty standard. Like, honestly, there was really just nothing that thrilling about this match. And also, as a fan, there was no real investment in this match to really care what was going on, because there was, like I said, no buildup. I don't remember it being announced at any point before the actual event. And it ended when A.R. Fox got a 450 splash onto Jurelistico and got the pin. Barely. Like, a millisecond after the ref had hit three, Drillistico had kicked out. And this didn't sit well for Roosh and Drillistico. They beat the crap out of A.R. Fox and Blake Christian. However, like I said, it was a good match. There was nothing wrong with it particularly. Just, there was just no emotional investment in it at all. I'd give it a three out of five. Yeah! Then for the Ring of Honor Women's World Championship, Athena challenged champion Mercedes Martinez. It was good, and unlike the previous match, this match has been built up for years. Athena and Mercedes Martinez have been rivals for a very long time. Not to mention they kept alluding back to Athena having competed in Ring of Honor before, but there was no championship at the time. This was when she was very new in her career. And of course they did it right because not only was there playing back and forth and it was brutal, Martinez though did dominate most of the match, however didn't completely dominate Athena, and it ended when Athena got the O-Face onto Martinez and got the pin and became the new Ring of Honor Women's World Champion. This match was better than the previous match of the night, but I wouldn't say anything overtly thrilling, but still did get itself a good, solid 3 out of 5. Yeah! And then Shane Taylor Promotions versus Swerve in Our Glory. The match itself was good. I mean, again, there wasn't much build-up to this. It only been announced earlier in the week. However, what was good about this was the stories. First of all, the stories between Shane Taylor and Keith Lee, as they used to be a tag team in Ring of Honor, before Keith Lee turned on Shane Taylor and eventually went to NXT. And since then, Shane Taylor struck out on his own, created his own faction that he's the leader of, and he's got guys in his fold like his tag team partner, J.D. Griffey. But also the story going on between Keith Lee and Swerve Strickland, who have been at odds for quite a while now, Keith Lee having taken off on him during their title match, at full gear. The two of them still basically on the outs, but trying to pull it together for the tag team's sake. But then didn't really work out as this time it was Strickland who took off on Keith Lee, leaving him alone in a handicap situation. However, while Shane Taylor was holding Keith Lee, JD Griffey went for a spin kick, missed Lee, knocked out Shane Taylor, giving Lee enough time to get JD Griffey in the Big Bang catastrophe and get the win without Strickland. Like I said, this told good stories, and it was a pretty good match. Another easy, solid 3 out of 5. Yay! Then, for the Ring of Honor 6-man Tag Team Championships, the Embassy challenged Dalton Castle and the boys. Again, this was a match that there was really absolutely no build-up to. It was announced earlier in the week. There's been no rivalry between these guys. At least with the previous match of Shane Taylor Promotions versus Swerve in Our Glory, not only was it announced, but at least Shane Taylor came on television and and challenged Lee and basically made it clear that he hates him. This, none of that. It was just announced that this is going to happen. Basically because we've seen the embassy on AEW. They're a Ring of Honor faction. So they get a title shot. And that stuff hurts. Like, the match itself was pretty good. It's just who cares? I mean, the only thing making you care is that it is a title match. But still, it was good and it ended how we expected with the Embassy being three big, huge guys versus Dalton Castle and the boys, who Dalton Castle's not a little guy, but he's definitely not huge like they are. So the Embassy basically dominated. Even at the end when Conantoa picked up one of the boys and threw him into Cage, who dropped him into a powerbomb and got the pin, making the Embassy the new six-man tag team champions. So far, there's been two title changes in this one event, which is pretty cool. This one was solid, but still a three out of five. Yay! Then for the Ring of Honor Pure Championship, a match that has been built up for months as Wheeler Yuta gets his rematch against Daniel Garcia. Like I said, this match has been built up plenty. 
Not only was it built up when Daniel Garcia took the title from Wheel of Yuta, but ever since there has been this rivalry between the Jericho Appreciation Society and the Blackpool Combat Club. And in this match, of course, how heated it is, immediately they both used up their one closed fist they're allowed in a pure rules match. Plus, pretty quickly in the match, around the 7 minute mark, Wheel of Yuta had used up all three of his rope breaks. Meaning very early in the match, if he's in a submission hold, getting to the ropes will not get the referee to break the hold. However, Daniel Garcia still had all three of his. But even though he had the odds against him, Wheeler Yuta was able to get Daniel Garcia in a hold where he was hammering the elbows down to the point that the referee had to stop the match, making Wheeler Yuta the new and the only two-time Ring of Honor pure champion. This was a nice boost as the previous four matches were all just okay. Only one had any kind of real buildup, but this one had the perfect kind of buildup, a true rivalry between these two. This match got an easy 4 out of 5. Yeah! Then, for the Ring of Honor Tag Team Championships, a double dog collar match between the Briscoes and FTR. Considering this is the fourth time these guys have wrestled, an element like the dog collar match was a perfect way to make this interesting. Now, this match itself wasn't really built up. Again, it was announced earlier in the week, but the Briscoes and FTR have had a rivalry going on for over a year now, so we'll forgive that. Not to mention, I'm pretty sure that while Tony Khan was willing to sign them to Ring of Honor, he doesn't want the Briscoes on AEW TV. In this match, Cash Wheeler was chained to Mark Briscoe, whereas Dax Harwood was chained to Jay. And the great thing about a match like this is you know... There will be blood. And there was. Everybody bled in this match. Cash Wheeler, Dax Hardwood, Jay and Mark Briscoe, even one of the referees. At one point, Dax Hardwood was hitting Jay with his fist wrapped around a chain and accidentally hit the referee. They were putting cool spots like that. For example, while Jay had Dax Hardwood up on his shoulders and Mark Briscoe was going for the Doomsday device, Cash Wheeler pulled the chain, pulling Mark Briscoe down onto a pile of chairs. There were spots like that all over the match. I can't name them all. This match was brutal, and it ended brutally too. While Jay had Dax in an interesting submission hold, with the chain wrapped around Dax's mouth. And Cash was trying to get in there to save Dax, but Mark Briscoe, with all of his might, was pulling on the chain to keep him out of the ring. At one point, Dax passed out, and the referee had to call an end to the match, making the Briscoes the new 13-time Ring of Honor Tag Team Champions. And then after the match, the Gun Club came out to beat up FTR, but that got broken up when the Briscoes came in to clear them out of the ring, out of respect. Not only was this an awesome and very brutal match, but there was a lot of story told in this. This one easily got a 5 out of 5. Yeah! Then for the Ring of Honor World Television Championship, Juice Robinson challenged Samoa Joe. This match was good. I mean, it's Juice Robinson, it's Samoa Joe. Can't really go wrong with that. But again, there was really no build-up to this. I mean, they announced it a couple of weeks ago, but at no point did they really do any real build-up. There's no rivalry between Juice Robinson and Samoa Joe. Just Juice Robinson wants his belt, and that's it. That's like something you put on the weekly show, not on a pay-per-view. Especially considering since Final Battle was announced, the guy on the poster was Samoa Joe. You're not really going to build up that match for his TV championship? I mean, after him taking the TNT title from Wardlow, it would have made sense for Wardlow to first try to take the Ring of Honor Television Championship from him, but this was a good match. There was nothing wrong with the match itself. Just again, there was no emotional investment on the fans' part. It was just a standard good match with plenty of back and forth until Joe got the muscle buster onto Robinson and got the pin, making him still the double champion, both the Ring of Honor Television Champion and the TNT Champion, so he can still proclaim that he's the king of television. I would say, though, that this one... Almost got a 4, but I still wouldn't quite give it a 4. Just a 3 out of 5. Yeah! Then the main event for the Ring of Honor World Championship. As Claudio Castagnoli finally gets his one-on-one -on -one rematch against champion the Ocho Chris Jericho. This rivalry plenty built up, not just from them being rivals for a couple of months, but the fact that this match was announced soon enough so we could have a few weeks of build-up to this match. And of course, it's Claudio Castagnoli, it's Chris Jericho. This match was freaking awesome. I mean, it was basically the same thing we'd seen before from these two, from their first one-on-one -on -one match, plus the four-way match they had, the tag team matches they've had. Every time these two mix it up, it's awesome. But the ending on this one was what really put this match over. 
as Castagnoli was doing his giant swing to Chris Jericho, rotating and rotating and rotating like he always does. And according to the commentators, because I had lost count, it was on rotation 33 that Jericho tapped out. That's just really freaking cool. Claudio Castagnoli is a two-time Ring of Honor champion. We'll see if there's a third match. I kind of hope there is. And this match ends the night with a very solid four out of five. <laughs> so Ring of Honor Final Battle 2022 overall was really good. Biggest complaint I have about it, though, is the same complaint I've had about pretty much every Ring of Honor event since Tony Khan has bought it, that most of the matches on the card had little to no build-up. Nothing. Heck, on every Ring of Honor event this year, there's been matches that were on the card that weren't announced at all. They were just there. If you want to put that on the pre-show, fine, whatever. But they had announced matches for the pre-show, but then the opening match on the main show was never announced. That just makes no sense, in my opinion. The Athena versus Mercedes Martinez, like I said, they've been rivals for a long time, but there wasn't that much build-up, just a little bit. The only matches that have had some real build-up were Wheeler Yuta versus Daniel Garcia and Chris Jericho versus Claudio Casignoli. Yes, the Briscoes and FTR have had a standing rivalry for a long time, but again, there was no build-up. It was announced earlier in the week. So imagine this, if you would have announced it like a month ago that they were going to have a dog collar match of all things, might have gotten a few more buy rates. However, it has been announced that Tony Khan is planning very soon to bring back the weekly Ring of Honor television show, but so far it's only going to be on Honor Club where you pay $9.99 a month. The only problem I have with that is it's only if you are a real die-hard Ring of Honor fan that you're gonna have the Honor Club. Especially because they're offering the weekly show and past pay-per-views. They're not gonna offer current pay-per-views. They said by the time it comes out, this pay-per-view will be on there, but it's gonna be a 90-day delay. Which I understand, they need the buy rates to sustain it, but I think a little earlier than 90 days might be sufficient, maybe 30. I think also put some AEW content on there, maybe put your weekly show on the Honor Club. Hopefully this deal works out with Warner Discovery and they actually put AEW on HBO Max, kind of like the way that WWE is on Peacock. And hopefully there they'll make enough revenue to where they can actually give the pay-per-views just on the subscription to HBO Max, but we'll see how that works out. Either way, with the return of a Ring of Honor television show, hopefully we can start getting some really good build-up to their pay-per-views. Not to mention, we can also get Ring of Honor off of AEW television because the weekly shows, Rampage and Dynamite, they are a little oversaturated. Not just titles, but the roster. Split them up. Have your own little developmental system. Basically, AEW is the main stage. Ring of Honor is the developmental territory. And they can use it considering all the young talent they have. However, on to Final Battle itself. It was good. It was worth watching. There were no bad matches on it. However, the majority of them were just okay mainly because there was no story to get us really invested into them. Again, there were a couple of fours. There was only one five. Mostly it was threes. On that note, I'm going to say it's very much worth watching, but I wouldn't give it a five or even a four. I would only give Ring of Honor Final Battle 2022 a solid, but three out of five. Yeah! So there you have it. That's my wrestling video this week. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure to hit like, hit subscribe, hit that little bell so you get notifications for when I post new videos. And... Leave a comment. Tell me what you thought of Ring of Honor Final Battle 2022. Tell me if you're excited that the weekly TV show is coming back. Love you guys.